As much as I am a huge PlayStation fan, the Vita never really interested me. I mean, yeah, sure there are a lot of great games, but none that I had to rush out and play. One game I was interested in though, however, was Gravity Rush. So the second it got ported to PS4, I knew I had to play it. The game is very strange in Japanese, but once you get past that, it is a great new franchise for PlayStation fans to check out. The story stars Kat, a girl who wakes up with amnesia and the ability to alter her own gravity. While it does a great job of setting up the story and the characters, the problem is the storytelling is very... Japanese. They very rarely explain anything to you. Things just happen and you're expected to go along with it. The amnesia subplot is never wrapped up. It is merely a footnote instead of a crucial part of the plot. That's not to say the story is poorly written or that it lacks characters, it's got that in spades. Kat has a lot of personality and sass to her. It's so engaging to see her become a de facto superhero, learning her powers and trying to help people. A lot of the side missions are performing simple acts for people, and you can really tell she likes owning up to it and becoming a town's de facto superhero. But when they introduce elements like time skips and godlike creators, they expect you to simply accept them as they are. Again, they are all very interesting subplots and I wanted to learn more, but the game is more interested in telling Kat's story of becoming a superhero. And to be fair, it is a great story, but it still left me wanting more in terms of the other plots. At the end of the day, it's a blast to play through, though it may leave you wanting more in the end. The game just reeks of anime style, from the character designs to the city, this extends to the voice acting and the cutscenes. They all speak in this weird made-up language, which gives the game a fun vibe of watching an anime sub. While some of the game does have in-game cutscenes, a fair bit of them are done with comic panels. Despite really only taking place in one city, you visit so many unique and interesting places. The initial starting area may seem very bland with muted browns and greys, but you soon play in much brighter, more vibrant areas. The music also begins very slow and classical, but soon becomes much more vibrant and exciting. The only real letdown is the enemy design. They are simply black goo monsters and that's it. They may come in different shapes and sizes, but they all lack any real distinction. It does help to give them a sense of unity, but beyond that it's still very unoriginal. On the whole, the game may seem very standard, but it has just enough personality to eke out its own name. Now I'm sure, like me, many of you are asking, how can altering your own gravity be used as a superpower? Well, Cat basically just flings herself at enemies and uses the momentum to tackle them. It's as clumsy as it sounds, but it really works in tandem with her journey and her character. At the start of the game, you sort of just fling yourself around and have a hard time figuring out just which way is up. But as you play more, you slowly gain control over your powers, and by the end, you're good enough to basically fly. There's no upgrade that makes it easier to control. You can collect hundreds of floating diamonds throughout the world to power up your attacks and stamina and other stats, but the only way you will get better with your gravity powers is with practice. It's a darn shame the combat is so bare bones and basics in comparison. The goo monsters have clearly glowing red spots you need to hit. All you need to do is kick them, or the much more effective move of simply fling yourself into them. It's cute in these moments when you're floating upside down trying to find an enemy's weak point, but that's just it. Aim, fire, and hope you hit the weak spot. Yeah, you get lots of different power-ups, but really all they do is overpower the enemy and not offer anything new in terms of strategy. Beyond that, the game really doesn't offer much else to do. They pepper new things like delivery missions and other things of that sort every now and again, but the main crux of the game is simply exploration and combat. It never becomes boring, but it does creep into the area of being tedious at times. Gravity Rush is unfortunately a case of the highs being high and the lows being low. The story is interesting, the characters are well developed and memorable, it has a gorgeous anime art style, and the process of going from awkwardly flinging yourself to fully mastering your skills is one of the most fulfilling gaming mechanics I have played in years. But it is a long process, and in those first few hours are really rough as you have no idea what you're doing. Combine that with once you do master it, they don't really throw anything new at you near the end of the game, and those last few hours just become more of the same. Still, at the end of the day, 
this game is basically just infamous combined with an anime. And it is as messy and as awesome as that sounds. It's Gravity Rush gets an 8 out of 10.